Yes, we're looking at Dirt Rally from Codemasters. It's finally made release on Steam, start of this week, um, but it has been early access for the best part of, I think, nine months or so. Um, and I've been playing it on and off over that period. Come a long way over that, uh, over that time, but I thought now it's on final release, maybe we should give it a bit of a review, give it a critique, look at the good points. And the uh, bad points is probably a bit strong, but you know, some bits where it maybe could have done better. Um, and you know, go over the game as a whole for those of you interested in maybe uh, giving it a try. What kind of game is it? Uh, is it a game or is it a simulator? That's going to be a tough one, isn't it? Um, I wouldn't call it an out and out simulator, but for those of you who are after a simulator rally experience, it's probably about the, the best thing out there now. Um, to qualify that, well, I mean, we'll go over a bit of history here, really. Uh, Codemasters obviously had the Colin McRae Rally franchise pretty much from day one. In fact, I've still got the discs here that I've dug out. McRae Rally 1 and 2, those were the landmarks in the kind of rallying game. There were, there were other games around that, that tried to tackle rallying. There were, a lot of them were very basic graphics, sprite-based. There were some 3D ones, which I think they were Network Cube Rally or something like that. They were actually pretty good at the time, but, but they didn't get the physics down right. Whereas McRae Rally, the first one, it, it really got as close as possible for the time uh, to the car physics to make it really feel like you were driving them. Then the, the kind of genre moved on. McRae went through, I think, five or six iterations, and it, it slowly became much more arcade-like. Um, and I think it lost its way a bit. And then we got into the whole kind of Dirt series, which became all about Ken Block, kind of Jim Carn and drifting and all that kind of stuff. And I really tuned out and lost interest there. The game had moved away from, I think, from its roots. Uh, and what a lot of people were doing then was they'd moved, moved over to... Richard Burns Rally, which still to this day is an incredibly popular and well-made, um, kind of the benchmark really for for people who like rally games, but they like them on a serious side, as close to a simulator as possible. Very difficult, um, lots of configuration to do, uh, lots of skills to master. It was difficult, it was hard, but it was bloody good. You know, if if you got on with Richard Burns Rally, if that was your kind of game and I say that was probably more of a, a simulator, then this is, this is um, Codemasters going back to their roots, trying to get the, the game, I use that in, the, in a generic phrase, back to being more realistic as much as it can be. You know? um, so yeah, so here we are, Dirt Rally. What's it like? Let's, uh, let's dive in and take a look. I mean, quickly you can see I'm playing it with a steering wheel, Logitech G25. Um, uh, you really need a wheel with this game. I can't even really imagine playing it with, um, with, you know, a, a Xbox controller or something like that. Um, do you? You can make best use of this by. I find uh, one thing I do have mapped is a handbrake because you're going to need it. So unfortunately, the stick shift gets thrown away. I don't use that. I have to use the paddles. But it does mean I can pull back on the stick here and have that as a handbrake. Pedals obviously buried away down there under the table. Uh, what's it run like in terms of performance? Pretty good. You can play it triple screen. Um, I've got it here running on a 970. Uh, triple screen. Um, not quite full detail. All the details are on high. Some of them are on um, ultra. But it's playing at, 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 I benchmarked it at 50 frames per second. So it's, it's certainly playable. Uh, so not what I would say massively heavy on the graphics. But you know, you're going to want something fairly modern. And that's on triple screen. You know, if you're running it single screen, no problem on a modern day card. Um, all the screen capture I will actually be doing in, in single screen because um, because of YouTube. Uh, but you can see it, it plays perfectly fine on triple if you're interested and it's a very good experience doing that too. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna dive in, we'll have a look at some of the menu structures first and then we'll go into some of the gameplay. Um, just give you a, an overview of the game for those of you thinking about buying it. There's your menu structure then. I'm not gonna dwell too much on this. Uh, most of it is fairly obvious. Uh, profile is your player profile, you can set up your game preferences, get your driver statistics. Um, one key bit here I suppose is, is the concept of assists, so you can turn off various assists and get a, a, a reward here, look see I've got a, an 80% bonus because I've got all the assists turned off. These are things like anti-lock brakes and whether you can use external cameras and automated uh, automatic transmission and stuff like that. You can also adjust how your co-driver calls here. So you start off with normal and as you progress you'll probably move that to early or maybe even very early depending on uh, how confident you get. Um, but yeah, no, I mean nothing nothing overly 
complicated in there. Likewise, options and extras is just the usual stuff around controls, graphics, audio, and what gets shown on your head-up display if you if you have that enabled. Um, probably one thing you, I would point out is you go into audio, you probably need to turn your engine uh, engines down from 100% because some of the cars are so loud you can barely hear your uh, co-driver. Some of them, so you might want to tweak that. But the the main bulk of the game is through these three menus here. Career is your campaign mode. Um, leagues is a, an online um, online mode where you you basically join into a, an online league. It's all it's all coordinated through a website. Uh, you can start a league yourself or join somebody else's, and you can uh, uh, measure your performance a across multiple um, rallies against uh, your peers out there on the internet. You know um, there are other also online modes inside Korea. We'll come to that in a second. Uh, but that's leagues, and then custom event is really just your quick start. Just just get me going. I just want to uh, start a quick little game of something, uh, and you can control the parameters around where, how long it is, what car you're going to use. There's no no limit to cars that you can use here, so you can just dive in and, and play. Um, and the the disciplines across all three of these are kind of the same. So I'm just going to quickly jump into custom event, just because this can be used to show you the the basic three modes of play. So we've got rally. Uh, which is, you know, if you're not aware of what stage rally is about, you know, you're competing against the clock. Uh, you're timed from the start to the finish line of a special stage. Um, you have multiple special special stages in an event. If I can get my teeth in, um, and then the person at the end of the the rally with the shortest, uh, the lowest time. Uh, this includes penalties. Um, is the winner. Simple as that. Um, hill climb is just a. Uh, Again, very similar in, in the sense that you, you're competing against the clock, not, not against other cars as such. Um, and it's the person up to the top of the hill who's uh, the quickest, who's the winner. That's all set at Pikes Peak at the moment. That's the only venue that's in that one. Uh, and Rally Cross, again, for those of you not in favour with it, it's kind of a cross between rallying and uh, circuit racing. So they're high-powered, rally-like cars, um, but they're competing in a, a, a lap, or multiple laps of a circuit. I say circuit, you know, the circuits are kind of a mix of tarmac and dirt, so, um, um, yeah, but the, the key thing here is there's multiple competitors, you are racing against other competitors to uh, to reach the finish line first, um, and that's kind of where the player versus player stuff comes in as well with Rallycross, you, you can, you're obviously competing with other people in the game at the same time. Um, when you choose one of these, the, the format, again, is kind of the same, you choose a location, uh, so you can see there's various locations here like Wales, Greece, Sweden, Finland uh, and Germany. Um, oh and Monaco as well, sorry I forgot Monaco. Um, uh, you can choose how many stages you want to compete in, 1 to 12, and how you're going to compare your results. So against computer controlled AI drivers, do you want to compare against your personal best time or the community delta which is basically measuring yourself against everybody else playing the game out there on Tinterweb. Yeah. So you, cho you choose all of that, uh, click the next one, and then you can choose what stage you want to compete in. And you've got conditions here which you can randomize between night and day, snowy, rainy, misty, all these sorts of things. Uh, so you can change the conditions of uh, many of the stages. There are some limitations, um, you know, uh, Rallycross is always taking part in daytime, for example. But um, that's the kind of structure of the game. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip into career mode here because there's a few differences uh, for career mode that you know new aspects to the game that um, that this brings in. So what have we got here? The the two main things are team management and garage. So we've got championships, which are your your campaign mode um, um, games. You so you've got three disciplines: rally, rally cross, hill climb. You can enter championships in those. This is all just single player, and you progress through that championship, multiple events in a championship, uh, and you score, uh, not points, but money, essentially, to your team. So you can see in the top right here, I've got my 100,000 credits that the team currently uh, has won from doing these events. Um, if I come back, there's custom championships is just basically about you choosing the factors, yeah, so how many events do you want in the championship, how many stages per event, how difficult do you want the AI, and you can control what the championship looks like, yeah, nothing clever there. Online events is um, quite a cool thing, so this hooks into RaceNet, and you get um, daily 
and monthly um, so here you can see yesterday I played a daily wager event I put down a hundred thousand credits as a wager and depending on how you do compared to everybody else decides how much you get back yeah so thankfully I was up in the top tier here so I get 125,000 credits back um, but you know you uh, you were measured against all of your peers out there uh, and you get ranked between top middle and bottom tier on these kind of daily and monthly uh, events so I'm going to accept that that will bump up my coffers nice, nicely uh, so you see here, the, here's the daily events, uh, I've got 16 hours left on either of these to do. There's a weekly event that you can do, uh, and there's monthly events as well. And you, you enter these, you have one hit at it, one go, um, your time submitted, you then wait for the period to elapse, and then your score is, is measured against everybody else's contributions, and where you come decides how you uh, how well you are rewarded. It's quite a cool idea, and it works well with rallying, because again, you're rallying against uh, racing against a clock, you know. Um, PvP events is basically rally cross. Yeah, so this is the the actual playing with other people at the same time online, and the only sport that this game covers that does that is rally cross. So you're 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 racing with other people, uh, six or eight people at a time. You know, uh, the key things then to look at here really are around uh, team management uh, and garage. Now, garage is just really where you unlock your cars. Um, in the interests of time, I'm not really going to go into detail here. Um, maybe a separate video I can go over all the cars. But you know, you start off on the left here with the cheaper 1960s cars, and you move up. I'll, I'll quickly go into each one for anybody who's interested in seeing the cars. You can see them. Yes, yeah, so there. Uh, 1970s uh, Cadet, one through on a Bath. Ooh, stiffy. Mark II Escort, Stratos. Uh, 1980s. You've got the M3 Evo. RS500, Cosworth, absolute pig to drive. Group B's, you've got the Metro 6R4, lovely. Audi Sport Quattro, ooh, the noise. RS200, gorgeous. 205 to 16, gorgeous. Delta S4, gorgeous. Basically everything in Group B was gorgeous. Uh, group B, rear wheel drive. Uh, there's the Manta 400, again, gorgeous. Uh, 037, death trap. Um, group A, so we move into the 90s. Um, uh, RS Cosworth Escort. Impreza, well it had to be in there didn't it, and the Delta HF, I don't want to take up too much time in the video doing these, so F2, you got Ibiza Kit Car, 306 Maxi, bit short on the F2s really, if I'm being honest, obviously a lot more cars could have gone in there, Megan, uh, Nissan, Almira, so some, could have been some good cars in there, same with Group A to be honest, where's the uh, where's the Toyota, oh, my, it was banned for cheating wasn't it, um, we got some R4s, couple of R4s in there, Impreza, Lancer, 2000s, we've got the Focus RS 2001, Impreza 2001, bug eye thing, horrible. Uh, RS 2007 Focus and the C4 from Citroen. So not everything from the 2000s, but I guess there's licensing issues with certain cars. Uh, 2000 and teenies, we've got the modern stuff, so Rally, uh, sorry, Mini Countryman Rally, the Fiesta RS, the Polo and the Hyundai, squeezed in there at the last minute. And then you've got the hill climb cars. So hill climb cars, 205, Sport Quattro, 405. Uh, and for the rallycross cars, quite well represented actually. You've got the DS3, the Fiesta, the Polo, the Peugeot 208, the Mini Countryman again, and the Subaru WRX in there. Sorry if that's dragged it on, but I know some people are probably interested to see what cars are in there. And you can buy those with your team credits, so uh, that's the idea behind it. Um, no, notice there's no real kind of unlocks or anything to uh, there, there are car unlocks but there's no kind of upgrades to them as such you don't really spend money on anything other than cars and team management so we're going to here uh, and this is part of your campaign mode so again you have um, a service service team if you like which consists of a crew chief that you start off with you always have a crew chief and then you have one two three and potentially four um, engineers uh, the engineer here at the end is, is locked out at the moment, but when I do another 204 miles, I'll have another slot that I can unlock. And you put engineers into these slots. Each engineer is skilled in certain areas. They've got a score here. Um, and, uh, yeah, the higher the score, the better they are at fixing certain things. And you can spend your money hiring more skilled, um, skilled individuals here, so you can hire and fire to your heart's content, spend up to 20 grand, 28, 32, 38, 42 grand on a 
on an engineer. You hire them for a season, basically for a 32 stages. So that's uh, that's the idea around those, and that'll become apparent when we get to looking at repairing, basically repairing of your car in event. Okay, uh, that's kind of enough there. Let's let's kind of quickly flick into some show some gameplay, um, and and also the the the. Uh, interim fixing of the car uh, in between events, basically. Or sorry, in between stages. So you you have repairing to do on the car. Let's uh, let's quickly dive into something. I'm just going to go into a custom event for now and get one going through that. So before you dive into a stage, you probably are going to want to do some vehicle setup. You don't have to, but um, it can pay dividends depending on the the stage. Uh, you go into vehicle setup, and you get this kind of various factors of your vehicle that you can adjust. There's seven here. It's going to depend on the car. Um, this one, for example, front wheel drive. There's a front diff, but four wheel drive cars would have a rear, a front, and possibly a central as well, for example. And this might look quite simple at first. You know, you've just got a left and right slider, soft to firm, short to long on the gears. But what you can do is in the um, campaign mode, you'll start off with this simplistic setup, but you can unlock the advanced vehicle setup once you've done a few miles. So uh, I can click into one of these. Uh, we'll take differential as an example. And you'll see there's three extra factors that I can set up in advanced mode. The amount it locks on drive, on power, the uh, the amount it locks on braking, and also the preload on the diff as well. Um, gears, for example, I can tune them individually, each ratio individually, and there's also a final drive there. So there's lots of, lots of setup options here. Uh, likewise on suspension, ride height, spring rate, stuff like that. Um, and you've also just damping separately. Damping, um, you've got a slow and fast bump and threshold, and also the same on rebound. Don't like the terminology soft and firm, if I'm being honest. It, I'd rather like more or less, or it would seem to make more sense to me. But um, soft basically means less less damping, firm means more damping, you know. Um, yeah, okay. So you, oh, there's a, a, a preset facility so you can kind of load. Um, you can do a setup, save it, and then bring it back nice and quickly uh, later on. Oops, wrong button. Uh, load preset F1. There we go. So it gets that all loaded up for you, ready. And there's a facility here to kind of upload them to your Steam Workshop and share them with other people if you so desire. So, yeah, vehicle setup, an important part. A lot of the cars are geared for, for certain scenarios, and you, probably the main thing you want to change is gearing, to be honest. Uh, you can have a shakedown, there's 10 shakedowns here you can see, so I can have a quick go, test the car out, if I don't like it I've still got a chance to change it before I actually start the stage, and then when you're ready, click start stage and off we go. Let's have a quick look at the uh, at the start line procedure and uh, kind of in-game, I'm not going to spend too much time in that though. So we're on the start line, the start procedure is to, as you can see it flashing there, you hold the handbrake uh, and the countdown will start. Um, before we do that, a couple of things, I'm not going to be able to talk and do this at the same time, but <laughs> do have a pay attention to the detail, which is quite nice to be honest. Uh, there's detail in the car, is kind of pretty good, co-driver there, look at his notes, he never changes the page mind, so he must have it all memorised. But you know, one thing to note here is the, the night time stages and the graphics, which are gorgeous, the, the use of lighting, um, very, very uh, effective. And this is just one example, but, but you know the wet stages where you've got rain splashing up on the screen is also very clever, very nice. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to shut up because there's no way I can talk and race at the same time. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Sixty crest, right six, and left five into right four half long into left four long. Don't cut, 100, caution narrows, right six, long, over crest. Oh, God, right towards the end as well. So that's my headlight take six, next. Into keep mid, over two crests, caution braking 60, right three, half long. Jesus. Nah, this and left four, half long. Difficult. <laughs> Dear. 100 through dip. Crest jump, maybe, to finish. That's a prime example of what not to do. Damn it, that was going pretty good as well. Oh, shit. 
shit. That would have been a good run as well. <coughs> but I think that's a good example of what can happen. In the service area, you, you get opportunities to change the setup of your vehicle if you want to, but also repair it between... Um, between stages. Uh, quite an important part. One thing that does bug me a bit with this though, and where the game falls falls short I think, is in the whole mechanic around repairing. So you've got this idea of nudging um, your damage components back up to 100% and as you do you can see it uses up certain time uh, within your 30 minutes of service time. Um, and obviously the more skilled your crew is, the less time they take, but it's a rather simplistic mechanic really. I mean, if you look at the radiator for example here, they're going to spend five minutes repairing a radiator, but uh, wheels, we've got what, five minutes to do wheels. Now if your wheels were that much damaged, I mean here they're 7% they're damaged, you wouldn't spend five minutes repairing wheels, you would just unbolt the old ones and bolt new ones on, yeah? This whole kind of tweaking things by individual percentages is just too simplistic for me. Uh, you know, a radiator, if it was more heavily damaged than this, this is a bad example, but say you've got a, a radiator 20% damaged, nobody's going to spend 10 minutes repairing it, you're just going to pull the old one out, stick a new one in. Yeah, It would have been nice to have seen them do something a bit clever here around uh, repair times, maybe have just two options, you know, a patch repair on something that would take a few minutes, would get you by. Um, versus a replacement of the unit at a realistic time, yeah. So, don't spend five minutes repairing wheels for God's sake. Just just take them off and bolt new ones on. Um, certain things, obviously, it would take time. Engine, I would argue, you know, you, you can't repair the engine past a certain point. So you could do patch repairs, but once the engine's broken in an event, it's broke. That's it, you know. Um, but as as it stands, what you end up doing is just tweaking things up as much as you can afford to. I think we're pre probably fairly good here we can get most stuff up to close to a uh, hundred percent yeah simplistic uh, not a fan of this to be honest think they could have done something much smarter and cleverer with this uh, but hey ho that's how it is when you get to the end of the stage you can uh, watch the replays and this is something that is worthy of mention because the replays are gorgeous looking like you could just sit down and, and watch yourself all over again through a stage on the replays the the graphics quality but but also just the way they cut together uh, it's quite beautiful um, so hats off I think to uh, Codemasters on the replays that's a really nice feature uh, you just sit and watch them I'm not gonna bore you by just putting one here I'll, I'll maybe do a separate video of that but um, uh, there are loads out on the internet you can have a look at but as you can see they are rather gorgeous looking Okay, this is turning into a bit of a long one, isn't it? But you know me, I like to go into the detail a bit, so I'm sorry, but I'll, I'll push on, we'll push on. Um, uh, you've had a look at the game there, I think that's kind of explained how it plays. So what I was gonna do was just cut into some um, positives and negatives, or just not so much negatives as bits that I think the game could have done better. Um, but we'll leave the positives till the last, we'll, we'll end on a high. Um, uh, so I've written a little list down here. Don't worry, it looks scary, but it's, it's, it's pretty minor. Um, we could be pedantic about certain bits of the game, like how accurate it is in terms of real rallying, uh, you know, stage stop stop line distances and stuff like this. I'm not going to get all that, that picky about it. Um, servicing we covered. Not a great fan of the whole servicing repair model. I don't think that really works very well. Um, one idea I did have was around tyres. The tyres seem to be an overlooked aspect in the game. Um, you, you've got no configuration of them in terms of tyre pressures for tuning, but also compounds and tread patterns wear on them seems as far as I can tell there's no wear model on tyres and there's certainly no tyre deformation modelling or anything like that um, and it's a missed opportunity really because I thought you could have driven to the conditions to the tyre choice that you made for the weather um, you know and you potentially get things wrong and you have to uh, have to adapt to to the deci decision that you made on tyres but no there's none of that in there and that's kind of a missed opportunity I'm not saying it has to some people might be saying, well, that's making it overly complicated. But it could have been an option in the game. You know, all of these things I'm going to suggest could have been in some sort of hardcore mode. Yeah, so you can choose to play it like this or not. Um, so it didn't have to ruin the game for people who don't want that level of complexity. Uh, but yeah, the number of spares that the car seems to carry of tyres on a, on a leg of a rally. Um, I mean, in reality, a car would probably have one, two to push spare wheels in it. But you don't really have to worry about punctures in this. Uh, they seems to magically 
um, carry enough to fix the car on a leg of an event, no problem. Um, so yeah, tyres, missed opportunity there. You'll hear me say this a lot, I think. Um, the co-driver just seems inanimate to me. Um, he spits the, the calls out, that's fine. But there's no kind of sense of, of danger of, you know, you can career into a tree at 60 mile an hour and he doesn't flinch, doesn't say a word. It would be good if he kind of talked you down, if you're going too quick, if you're being a bit reckless. Likewise, if you're maybe behind the pace, he could, he could kind of give you some verbal cues to pick the pace up or that you're not doing all that well. When you get a puncture, he could call out how far you are to the end of the stage. Particularly when you're playing without any head-up display or cheats, it would be, not cheats, that's wrong, uh, any assists. It would be useful if the co-driver told you, oh, you know, it's two miles to the end of the stage, okay, well, we'll decide whether we're going to stop and change it or not. Um, also, the, the note system, it's stuck at one to six. <coughs> Those of you who prefer one to nine, or for me, more, more descriptive notes, there's no option to change that. Um, so you're stuck with the system that the game provides. Also, I had an idea. Would it have been that difficult to just push the genre a bit and maybe have it make your own notes? Yeah, it wouldn't have been that difficult with a headset and a microphone. You could have had the game basically. You go out on a recce, you drive the stage, you make notes. You could press a button on the wheel and call out what you want that corner to be called. It records your voice, plays it back when you do the stage competitively, or even does some fancy voice recognition of it and calls it back in a in, in the you know the computer. Um, voice uh, but yeah just it would have just been something new and different to do it would have given another depth to the game pushed the genre a bit you know but no we're stuck with what we've got oh uh, well um, cars physics the whole cars physics thing it's not really a negative um, I think they've got a good balance yeah some people are going to say it's not it's not um, realistic and some of the way the cars handle does seem a bit odd there seems to be a um, certainly on some of the front wheel drive cars, uh, an inbuilt understeeriness that's a little bit over the top. But yes, I know a front wheel drive car is going to understeer, but some of them are a bit daft. It's kind of like touch the brakes and right, we'll oversteer or we'll start turning, you know. Um, but you get used to it. And I think I'm not going to criticise it because, in terms of the balance for the overall game, it's good. It's about right. It's challenging enough without being stupidly ridiculous. But some of the cars, some of the rear wheel drive cars, I swear it's even harder to, to power slide them in the game than it would be in real life. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to grumble too much about the physics side of things. They've done a good balance. Um, one issue I've got is other competitors. Apart from Rallycross, there's no sense or feeling that you're actually in a rally here. There's nobody lined up on the start line, look behind you. You never catch up with another. There's no other cars on the stage, so you never catch up with the, the competitor in front. Likewise, a competitor behind you never catches up with you. You never see other cars that have gone off and there's been an accident. And it would have just brought a depth to the game, you know, about this idea of catching up with somebody, dust to contend with, knowing that you're progressing well by catching up with somebody, or likewise feeling the pressure of being caught from behind and knowing you're not doing good enough. Um, missed opportunity, again, just could have done something cleverer there. Uh, venues, on the whole, are fine, are good, the detail there is very good. For the stages that I certainly know from real life, which is really only Wales, very accurate, you know, really good uh, attention to detail, but I can't help feeling that the venues are just regurgitated GPS data, to be honest. They, the venues are all samey from other, from other games, other genre, um, not genres, but other rally games. It doesn't feel like they've done anything different. In reality, in real life, you wouldn't dive straight into a, a, one of these kind of events, yeah? You go to what's called single venue rallies that are typically run at race tracks or um, disused military bases and stuff like that, private land. And, and they could have just done a bit of a progression thing and started off with some small little uh, stages, something like, I mean, I'm going to give UK examples because that's what I know, but you know, Western Park or, um, or a race track somewhere um, and just had little little events like that. And then you progress up to the to the bigger ones. They could have. I'd love to have seen some new, uh, exciting, different stages. Let's have some archetypal kind of rally stages like Isle of uh, Isle of Mull, for example, or Isle of Man, even uh, Ireland, Wexford, Epping, um, Jim Clark. You know, they could have done. And, and I know Codemasters are UK based, so it wouldn't have been too difficult to have done those kind of. Um, venues compared to flying all around the world for others you know so yeah the venues are okay but I just feel like they could have pushed it a bit um, upgrades tuning progression in the in the game 
there's not really a lot there. So if you are the kind of person who likes to have some kind of defined um, grind, if you like, uh, if you want to be able to earn upgrades to the car, if you want some kind of predefined progression through the game, it's not here. Uh, I don't think that's a bad thing, to be honest, but some people might, won't like it. You basically, you buy cars, uh, you expand your garage, but that's it. There's no tweaking or tuning the cars, buying additional extras to them or, or stuff. I think that's a good thing, but I agree some people won't agree with me. Um, okay, let's have some positives, shall we? Um, I think the, the, the big positives are the visuals, the graphics. Um, it's not just that, that you know, we've got high quality graphics cards these days, but the attention to detail in terms of the dust, the particles, the rocks that are spat up out the back of the tyres, the, 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 the grooving in the ground when you're hard on the brakes or skidding, you get these little sort of trenches marked in the ground. Um, there is a lot of attention to detail there. The, the nighttime stages and the lighting effects, really, and the water effects as well, they go through the water splashes, rain on the screen, really, really good. Uh, and so Codemasters need a, you know, a round of applause for that because the visuals are very, very good, apart from when it cuts the back of people's heads off. And you can see inside their brains, which is quite nice, um, but we'll ignore that. Um, replays, as I touched on earlier, look, look gorgeous. Um, audio as well is often overlooked, but they've done a really good job in the game here. I've not got audio experience of every single car, but, but of the ones that you do recognise and the few that I've been in, you know, they've obviously done their, their homework, they've sampled the cars, um, but it, it's it's more than just a pretty thing, you know, the, the audio cues from the game in terms of the load on your engine, the traction that your car has got, um, are all really important. They're quite quite subliminal, but they get, get the message in and they do enhance your gameplay quite a lot. The clattering of the stones under the car gives you a feel of how much grip there is. Um, so, you know, the hats off for the audio as well. The multiplayer side of things is a positive because it's just nice and simple. Obviously it's an easy model to do rallying because you're just competing against a clock so it just uploads times and compares against everybody else. But it's it's seamless, you know, you don't have to sit and join servers with the, the rallycross thing accepted, you know, there's the whole joining for a rallycross. But but the you know, the multiplayer bit, the daily and weekly and monthly challenges, I like that. They're, they're quite good, they're quite engaging and, um, and interesting to join in, so I like those. So yeah, uh, you know, I think has it moved the genre on that much? Considering the time difference between this and Richard Burns Rally, which has got to be what, uh, for 13, 14 years, I would guess, it's not really pushed the genre on that much to be honest. If anything, it's regressed back a bit from the previous Dirt ones, but that's a good thing. Um, but you do, you can't help but feel that they could have done more with it. Um, it. It doesn't feel to me like it's really moved the genre on that much. But, as a benchmark for rally-style games, you have to say this is it now. Um, is it the game for you? You know, if you're, if you're into the kind of um, uh, simu more simulator kind of experience, you like to get deep into the, the, the reality and the physics of it, um, you like, uh, but you want a bit of a change maybe from track based games, then yeah, you'll enjoy it. As an arcade game, yes, you can play it that way. Um, you can turn the assists on the head up display, the external views, but uh, I don't think it then really gives you much more that you've not seen in previous stuff. So I wouldn't say it plays to that as its strength, you know. Um, definitely you know, embed yourself with a wheel and, and really get into it and you'll enjoy it. Hopefully that's kind of given you an idea as to whether it's the game for you. Um, but yeah, overall very impressive. Put me on the spot and maybe give it a mark, a score. I'd, I'd give it an 8 out of 10, you know, uh, 8, 8 and a half. Could, could have tried harder, but, but you know, good, good effort. Um, yeah, I hope that's been useful. It's certainly been fun playing it for the last nine months and I will probably be ca carrying on playing it for a bit longer yet. Sorry the video's dragged on, that's usual me, just have to warble on, don't I? I'll leave it at that, let you get on with your day, have fun.